In this presentation, we will introduce you to the concept of data publishing. We will also introduce you to GBIF's Integrated Publishing Toolkit. At this point in the course, you have moved through all of the sections of a mobilization project. Now you are ready to share your data. You've produced a cleaned and standardized data set, and you want to share and see that data on the GBIF data portal. But there's more to it than simply handing over a spreadsheet or a text file to GBIF. You must publish the data. Data publishing is the act of making biodiversity data sets publicly accessible and discoverable in a standardized form, i.e. Darwin Core, via an access point. This access point is a URL, a web address. Most organizations within the GBIF network, otherwise known as publishers, make use of an IPT to publish their data. These publishers may choose to host their own installation of an IPT, like the Field Museum, but generally prefer to find a suitable host for their data publishing activities. This might be through an established GBIF participant node, like GBIF France, or through an established thematic group, like VertNet. Or another option might be to make use of one of the GBIF hosted IPTs like the BID, BIFA, or regional IPTs. If you are part of groups like Symbiota or the Living Atlas communities, they have other means to assist you with publishing your data to GBIF. The definition on the previous slide should probably be updated to include some words about waivers and licenses. The act of not only making the data accessible, but making it as open as possible. In an effort to document the level of openness of a data set, GBIF maintains, in keeping with a 2014 decision by the GBIF Governing Board, that all data published and registered for use in the GBIF portal must be issued with one of three Creative Commons options. CC0 is a waiver for data made available for use without any restrictions. CCBY is a license for data made available for any use with appropriate attribution. CCBYNC is a license for data made available for any non-commercial use with appropriate attribution. Note that CCBYNC licenses have a significant effect on the reusability of data. GBIF encourages data publishers to choose the most open option they can wherever possible. Projects supported through GBIF-led funding must use either CC0 or CCBY options. The Integrated Publishing Toolkit, or IPT, is a free open source software tool written in Java that is used to publish and share biodiversity data sets through the GBIF network. The first version of IPT was released in 2009. It was redesigned and re-released in 2011. Since that time, the IPT has been updated with new features, bug fixes, and security improvements. While the IPT is maintained at GBIF, the community of biodiversity informatics developers are able to contribute to its development. Some features include, it is the main, but not the only, publishing tool for GBIF. One IPT can host many data sets on behalf of many institutions, each clearly represented. It has test mode and production mode. It is multilingual and has been translated into seven languages. It is a server-side software, so it needs a stable connection and requires technical administration. This is why many institutions choose to publish their data on hosted IPTs. You can find more information on data hosting on the GBIF website under the How-To menu. For the remainder of our course, we will be demonstrating and completing exercises using the IPT. We're now putting together what you learned in the first two presentations in the data capture section on standards and data types. At its heart, the IPT is based on Darwin Core and the Darwin Core text guide and its recommendations for sharing data in a Darwin Core archive. The Darwin Core contains three distinct data cores which match up to the three data set types that GBIF accepts. Keep in mind that each data set has one and only one core file. 
Each core file corresponds to a dataset type, occurrence, checklist, or sampling event. Each dataset can have one or more extension files. The aim of an extension is to add new data fields not present in the core. Each entry in the core is linked to either 0, 1, or several rows in an extension file. Each row in an extension file reference one and only one row in the core file. Some examples. The core is occurrence with no extensions. The core is occurrence with multimedia extension. The core is occurrence with Audubon core and measurement or fact extensions. The core is taxon with no extensions. The core is taxon with species distribution extension. The core is event with occurrence and measurement or fact extensions. The first core is the occurrence core. As a reminder, an occurrence dataset contains one individual or one group of individuals. Each row has a unique identifier, which is an occurrence ID. Other fields for occurrence data include where, when, how, and by whom was each occurrence observed and or collected in the field. The next option is the taxon core. As a reminder, a checklist data set contains taxonomic concepts, not individuals. It is a catalog or list of named organisms or taxa. Each row will have a taxon ID. Each taxon must be unique. The last option is the event core. As a reminder, sampling event datasets allow data publishers to provide greater detail, not only offering evidence that a species occurred at a given location and date, but also making it possible to assess community composition for broader taxonomic groups or even the abundance of species at multiple times and places. By indicating the methods, events, and relative abundance of species recorded in a sample, these datasets improve comparisons with data collected using the same protocols at different times and places, and in some cases, even leading researchers to infer the absence of particular species from particular sites. Each row will have an event ID, and each event must be unique. This is a good point to review all of the fields required by GBIF. If required fields are not supplied, GBIF will have difficulty indexing your dataset. Each core has its own set of required and recommended fields for the dataset and for the associated dataset metadata. As you now know, metadata is the data about your data and it enables users to know if your dataset will be fit for their use. Don't stop at the required and recommended fields. The more data you are able to share, the more useful your dataset can be to end users. You can find the data quality on the GBIF website under the How To menu. Extensions were introduced in the standards presentation. Publishing a dataset is now where you will put them into use. As mentioned previously, GBIF maintains the list of approved and draft extensions on its tools subsite. The approved extensions can be enabled by an IPT administrator on a production IPT. Draft extensions can be enabled by an IPT administrator on a test IPT. If you know you have data that cannot be shared with Simple Darwin Core, it is worth reviewing the list of available extensions. If you think an extension doesn't exist, try reaching out to the members of the Tadwick community or posting on the Darwin Core Issues site. Community members will help guide you. Also in the standards presentation, you were introduced to Darwin Core Archives. This is an example of a Darwin Core Archive with extensions. It is an occurrence data set that has been published with images, determination history, and Jing Bank information. Until now, it may have been difficult to imagine how two single files can be related. A core with an extension can represent the following relationships. 1 to 0, 1 to 1, and 1 to many. The core file will always contain unique records. In this example, using the taxon core, 
Each taxon is unique and is represented by a taxon ID. In the vernacular names extension file, each vernacular name is unique. The first three represent common names for the species Struthio camelus, with a one-to-many relationship. The fourth name represents the common name for the species Electorus chukar, with a one-to-one -one relationship. In this example, the third and fourth taxons in the core file do not have a match in the extension file, which is a one-to-zero relationship. As we finish up this presentation, we'd like for you to begin exploring the IPT. In the eLearning platform, you will find your login information and the location of the test IPT. Log in and take a look around. In the next presentation, you will watch a demonstration on how to use the IPT, after which you'll be ready to try it yourself. Thank you. If you have questions on this presentation, please use the provided forum in the eLearning platform. This video is part of a series of presentations used in the GBIF Biodiversity Data Mobilization course. The Biodiversity Data Mobilization curriculum was originally developed as part of the Biodiversity Information Development Program funded by the European Union. This presentation was originally created by Sophie Pamerlon with additional contributions by Nicholas Noé, Laura Ann Russell, and Dag Anderson, BID and BIFA trainers, mentors, and students. This presentation has been narrated by Laura Ann Russell.